the iPhone 13 Pro Max versus the 12 Pro Max. I know you guys really wanna see the differences in the cameras, most likely. In fact, that's pretty much the main thing that I was interested in when it comes to these two phones, because let's face it, they look almost the same, and Apple did tout that there's some big differences this year when it comes to the cameras, and no doubtedly there are. So the main focus of this video is really gonna be aimed at the cameras, but I might point out a few other little differences as well, because now that I've had the 13 Pro Max for a couple of days, I've definitely noticed some of the differences between these two phones, and that's what we're gonna talk about in today's video. Now, starting with the camera, let's talk about regular photographs first. It seems like the 13 Pro Max just seems to do everything a little bit better than the 12 Pro Max, depending on what we're talking about here. When it comes to regular photos like these, and of course I'll put up some B-roll on the screen so you can see closer to what I'm talking about here, I would say that the iPhone 13 Pro Max pictures are just crisper and sharper, and the fact that you have the different photographic modes, or they call it the photogenic modes now, Let's see, they have Vibrant, which is the one I have mine set on, and they also have Rich Contrast, Standard, and Warm and Cool. But I think Vibrant really looks great in a lot of situations, especially if you take a lot of pictures outside like I do, and that's something that the 12 Pro Max doesn't have, guys. So if you're into taking pictures, already the 13 Pro Max is a better phone because you get to take different types of pictures than you would be able to with the 12 Pro Max. Now sure, you are able to adjust the pictures that you take with the 12 Pro Max to probably tweak it and make it look like the 13 Pro Max pictures, but the fact that the 13 Pro Max can just do that right out of the gate is a nice advantage for this phone. Now let's talk about video real quick, and this is the main thing that I use this phone for. A lot of you might know that I shoot all of these videos on an iPhone, and I'm actually using the iPhone 13 to shoot this video right now. So all of this that you're seeing right now is being filmed on the iPhone 13. The immediate thing that I noticed when I took the very first video with the 13 Pro Max is just how well the autofocus works better than any iPhone I've ever seen. And I'm gonna put up an example on the screen for you right now so you can see what I'm talking about. This is the first video I'm ever recording on the Pro Max. No microphone, just built in. You can see a beautiful view out the window. And then as soon as I put it on you, it automatically focuses on your face. And the background is... And the background gets blurry. Even though this is not on the cinematic mode. Now let's move on to the cinematic mode. This is something that all of the new iPhones have, so it's not exclusive to the 13 Pro Max, but I'll tell you which iPhone doesn't have cinematic, the 12 Pro Max. And if this is something that you're planning on utilizing, then already it's a no-brainer. You need to just go for the 13 Pro Max, but it is worth noting that you can also go for the regular 13, which also has a cinematic mode as well. But keep in mind, it doesn't have the LiDAR scanner on the back, and I'm pretty sure that that's going to play a role in just how well the focus works when it comes to switching subjects, when you're switching who you're gonna be focusing on and which background to blur in cinematic mode. So just keep that in mind. There are no differences this year, guys. Like last year, you had to go for the 12 Pro Max if you wanted to get the best camera. This year, that's not the case. You can get just the regular 13 Pro, save yourself a hundred bucks if you don't mind the smaller screen. To be honest with you, after I've had the 12 Pro Max now for an entire year, I've gotten really used to the screen size of this phone and I'm trying to test out the iPhone 13 for the day, like I'm filming this video with it, I'm using it as my main phone, and it just feels weird, it feels small. Once you're kind of used to this form factor, it feels like kind of hard to go back. I guess that's the best way to put it. <laughs> A couple other differences I wanna point out between these two phones that have nothing to do with the camera, just like kind of regular things I notice using throughout the day. The first thing is, on my first impression video that I put out a couple days ago, the iPhone 13 screen dimmed right away when I was outside in the sun, and so does the 12 Pro Max. However, 
when, the, when I was using it the next day, I was sitting on this patio that you see behind me, direct sunlight, and it didn't dim at all. So I think the reason was because that day when I did the unboxing, the actual box was sitting in the sun for a while while I was unboxing the 13, and it was already heating it up quite a bit before I even took it out of the box. And so that kind of gave it like an unfair disadvantage on how fast it was gonna heat up. And since I've been using it in like the real world so far, it hasn't done that to me again, but it has only been two days, so I wanna stress that. And it's kind of too soon to tell if this problem has really been solved. But one thing I will point out is that even though this thing did dim on me, it did recover from that dimming quite a bit faster than the 12 Pro Max does. When this thing starts going dim, it takes a good 10 minutes or so for it to like cool down and recover and actually bring the screen back to full brightness. And when you're trying to use it outside, that's just like a terrible situation, guys. Like I film a lot of my videos outside. I film a lot of B-roll outside. And so the hotter it is and the more direct sunlight you have, then the higher chance you're gonna have of this thing dimming on you. And so far, the 13 Pro Max has been much better in that department. Now here's another thing I wanna mention about these two phones. Yes, the iPhone 13 Pro Max is heavier than the 12 Pro Max. Everybody already knows that, but you would think that would be a bad thing, right? I wanna give you at least one scenario where that's a good thing, at least in my opinion, that I have found so far. What I'm holding here is a gimbal, and the whole point of a gimbal, if you don't know what this is, is basically to take nice, clear, cinematic shots. So let me just hook this up real quick and I'll show you what it does and why the 13 Pro Max is better even though it's heavier for a piece of equipment like this. Now check this out guys. You see I have the camera set up here on the 13 Pro Max. The last couple times I used the same 12 Pro Max on this same gimbal, I actually had some balancing issues. And from what I can tell, the reason why this is the case is because when you hold these two phones in your hand, Yes, the 13 Pro Max is heavier, but the weight is also more evenly distributed. And the best way for me to explain that is like the top part of the phone where the camera is here is almost equally as heavy as the bottom part of the phone. And that's probably mainly due to the new battery, which is in this thing, which is heavier. When you hold both in your hand, then you can feel the difference that the 12 Pro Max is very top heavy, meaning that the section where the camera is, is definitely the heavy side of the phone, whereas the bottom part here is very light. And you see how this is happening right now? It's going sideways, and that's what I was having the problem with with the 12 Pro Max, and I'm glad this just happened on the video so I can show you. So this happened because the phone was not totally balanced. So yeah, now it seems to be much better balanced than before. And that problem that you just saw was happening all the time with the 12 Pro Max. When I set the 13 Pro Max up on the gimbal yesterday, it seemed like this wasn't gonna be an issue. So hopefully it won't be. I'll need to test that some more, of course. But because it's heavier, I feel like the weight distribution is better. So if you are gonna be using this phone on a gimbal, then the extra weight actually works in your favor. Now they did say that the screen on the 13 Pro Max is supposed to be a little bit brighter than the 12 Pro Max. So I'll put them up here for you guys to just see for a second and I'll, I'll make a little B-roll shot for you as well. I don't know, tell me if you can see the difference, but I really can't. Um, I, don't, I don't really notice a difference. But like I said earlier, when you're outside and having this thing dim less often and recover from the dim faster is a huge upgrade in my opinion. So my first impression of it really wasn't great, but so far I've been very happy with how little it's actually dimming in the real world when I'm using it outside. That's a big plus and a big win for this phone. So yes, the 13 Pro Max is quite a bit better than the 12 Pro Max. And if you're like me or you are a creator and you just wanna have the best possible device and the best possible camera to make your YouTube videos or your TikTok videos or whatever you do with it, then it's totally worth the upgrade, guys. And also, I haven't noticed any of the issues so far that I did when I first got the 12 Pro Max, like having 
microphone crackling noises and things like that. I still want to do more testing with that, so I'll be back in a future video giving you more findings on this, but I wanted to just make a quick versus video giving you guys the gist after just a couple days of using it. Is it worth upgrading to the iPhone 13 Pro Max from the 12 Pro Max? Absolutely it is. If you enjoyed this video, then go ahead and check out my iPhone 13 and 13 Pro first impressions video right over here, and I'll catch you guys over there.